Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a review of Surplus at Risk, which is a value at risk concept applied to a pension for FRM candidates. This example is from the 2008 practice exam, question 37. And we need a few assumptions about a hypothetical pension fund. And I like to think about this as assets on the left-hand side of the balance sheet and liabilities here in red on the right-hand side of the balance sheet. Our hypothetical pension fund has assets of 120 million and liabilities of 100 million. That means it has a surplus of 20 million. Then, as part of the mean variance framework, we want to know two statistics about each of the asset and liability. That is the mean and some measure of dispersion. So for our assets, we assume expected return of 8% with volatility of 12%. For the liabilities, we assume expected return of 5% with volatility of 3%. That means over the next period, and here typically with pension funds the period is one year, we're assuming that the change in assets is simply the 120 million that we start with multiplied by the expected return of 8%. So we expect the assets to grow by 9.6 million and similarly we expect liabilities to grow by 100 million times 5% or 5 million. We also need, in this case, or are given as an input, the correlation between the assets and liabilities. That's 0.3. Now, the expected growth in the surplus, that's really easy. We're expecting assets to grow by 9.6, but that's offset by a $5 million growth in liability. So we have an expected growth in the surplus of $4.6 million. That means we start the year with $20 million and we're going to expect to add 4.6 million to the surplus. We expect the surplus to grow to 24.6. Now we need the variance of the surplus and what we use here is the same formula that we've seen under the traditional mean variance framework for what was called what could be called the Markowitz portfolio variance where our portfolio has two assets or two positions and in this case instead of two positions we have an asset and a liability and we're, we have the statistics including the correlation so we just need to calculate the portfolio variance as if it were two positions the only trap here is we want to remember that we're not the position is not assets plus liabilities it's assets minus liabilities so we're taking the variance of assets minus liabilities and we need to remember to subtract the final term and not add it let me show you what I mean Variance of the surplus will start in the usual way. We take assets and square it. We then multiply that by the variance, which is going to be the volatility squared. Then we need to add the position and the liability squared multiplied by the variance of the liabilities. So again, that's the volatility squared. And now we're sort of by habit accustomed to saying plus two but we're doing the variance of assets minus liabilities. So the key thing here is to remember to do a minus. So it's minus two times position in the asset, times position in the liability, times the volatility of the asset, times the volatility of the liability, multiplied by finally the correlation. So we've included that final term which accounts for the correlation and but it but it's a minus instead of a plus so that gives us the variance of the surplus and it, and as you know we can take the square root of a variance to get the volatility of the surplus and now notice i'm going to i'm going to bold these we have the two things we need to calculate var or value at risk we're just calling it surplus at risk because it's for a pension fund we have the expected gro of growth of 4.6 million and we have the volatility of 13.8. We only finally need to specify a confidence to associate with our VAR. I'll use 95% because that's the question. And as you know, we can in Excel take norm S env of that probability to get the inverse standard normal cumulative distribution or a normal deviate of 1.64. And we're now in a position to calculate the surplus at risk. And I'll pull that formula out just to remind value at risk. This is what Jorian calls the absolute value at risk. So I'll just replicate this. I'm going to start by doing minus the expected growth. I'm going to keep it over one period. So I'm not, I'm not going to do any scaling by the time period. So I take minus the expected return of 4.6. And then I simply add the volatility of the surplus multiplied by that normal deviate. 
So that's how simple that is. My expected return is being offset by the volatility of the surplus scaled as a function of our confidence. And I get 18.1 million is the surplus at risk. So that's the exercise. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time. Thank you.